Hey everyone, Mike here with the Sysadmin Guru, and in this video, we are going to be installing Active Directory services and setting up our brand new forest and domain environment. Now, we're going to start with a already installed Windows Server 2012. If you haven't watched the video or don't know how to install Windows Server 2012, check out this video of mine that I just recently posted on installing Windows Server 2012. It's super simple, nothing too complicated. So feel free to go watch that if you haven't already, otherwise we'll just progress forward. So I'm on our Windows Server 2012 server here, and we're going to go ahead and just log into it. So I need to, since I'm using VMware, we're going to go ahead and just send it to Control-Alt-Delete here. And we're going to use our super secret password to log in. Now once we've logged in, these oh, there's only a couple things I've actually done to this computer. And what I have done is I have given it an IP address, so nothing spectacular. And I've changed the name to Guru DC. And we'll see that here in a minute. So you can see right now that server manager is loading and this automatically loads on any new installation. You have to physically turn it off if you don't want it to load anymore. So if I come to the local server, you can see my computer name is Guru DC. And the workgroup is still workgroup, which is the default workgroup. The firewall is turned on, remote management, all that stuff's enabled. I don't have a remote desktop turned on because I don't need it at the moment. So what we're going to do now is we're going to install Active Directory services, and we're going to set up our brand new domain. So to do that, we're going to need to install a role. So if I go over here to Manage, Add Roles and Features is what I want to do, and then the, I'm going to get this screen. So you can read this if you like. I typically just check this box that says Skip This Page by Default. Totally up to you. So if you click next, installation type, role-based or remote desktop services installation. For us, we're doing role-based. We'll remote desktop services installation is a whole other topic. And then we select the server we want. Now the cool thing with 2012 that was introduced that was not in 2008 or any previous versions is the ability to actually from this server manager, we can manage multiple computers. So we can obviously install this service or role on our computer we're logged into, or we could install it actually on other computers in the environment. We don't care about it at the moment, so we're just going to make sure that we've selected our server, and you can see my IP address I've given the server here. And we'll just click next. And now we get to determine the roles we want. Yay! So we want Active Directory Domain Services, or ADDS. And then when I click that, it's going to tell me all these other things that I have to install as well for ADDS to work. So we're cool with that. We're just going to leave it and we'll click add features. And we want to go ahead and actually do a DNS server as well because this is going to be a domain controller slash DNS server. So we'll go ahead and click add feature there. Excellent. And those are the only two we need to do. We don't want to go ahead and do anything else at this point because we want to make sure our Active Directory domain controller gets set up properly. We may want to go back later and do, say, certificate services or something else, but for now, we're just going to do Active Directory Domain Services and DNS. So we'll go ahead and click Next, and then it's going to give us the optional features. We're going to leave them at the default, and we'll click Next. And now this is going to give us a little bit of information about ADDS, um, and it's going to say basically what it does. It stores information about users, computers, and other devices basically in a centralized, secure place. So when you deploy a computer out to your network, as long as you add it to the domain, any users that have been configured within that domain would then be able to log into that computer. You wouldn't have to, like a work group, go to each computer and make sure every user has a login. All that stuff is centralized. So we'll go ahead and click Next here. And this is going to tell me a little bit about DNS or domain name services. DNS is crucial when it comes to Active Directory. So we have to make sure that DNS is going to be functional and working and installed on our server. So we look good there, so we'll click Next. It's going to just ask us everything here. It's going to confirm that we want to do all this, and we do. So I'm going to go ahead and check the Restart Destination Server Automatically Required, and it's just going to confirm. I'm going to say Yes, and then I'm going to click this little Install, and this is now going to run through. It's going to run some prerequisite checks, make sure everything's happy, and if everything's happy, it's going to start the installation, and then if need be, which it probably will, is going to restart. And once the computer restarts, we'll be able to go through the next step of actually creating our Active Directory domain. So I'm going to go ahead and let this run and finish, and we'll be back once it is.
So now we can see that our installation has succeeded on Guru DC. And you can see on the left, I don't know if you noticed or not, but now we have ADDS and DNS showing up on the left side that we can manage. So I'm just going to go ahead and let's see, click in here and click close. And I'm going to go ahead and check our little notification here. Okay, so we do not need a reboot for this. Good. But what we need to do is this particular role has what they call post-deployment configuration. And in order for us to actually create an Active Directory environment, we have to do this. So we're going to go ahead and do what's called promoting a server to a domain controller. So we'll just click that little guy there, and it's going to go ahead and start walking us through everything. Now, the steps for this are going to be the exact same whether you're going to be creating a new domain controller within an existing forest or domain, or whether you're creating a brand new domain and forest. Now, the difference in hierarchy is domains are part of a forest. A forest is kind of the, the whole thing, and domains are pieces within that. So in our case here, we're going to add a brand new forest. So in this case, so we'll click this little radio button. Now, if we had an existing forest, we could click this box, and we could pick the parent domains, the new domains, and whatever we want there. But in this case, we're going to create a brand new forest. And I'm going to call this forest, oh, let's call it sysadminguru.local. And the reason I'm using .local is because .local is typically what a lot of people use to when you have a local domain and you're not going to be doing email addresses or that kind of stuff with those domains. Since this is just a test domain for me, a temporary domain, I don't own sysadminguru.com. I own the sysadminguru.com. That's the reason we're going to keep this at .local. So now that I have typed that in, I'm going to go ahead and just click Next. It's going to give me the different domain controller options that I want. And in this case, we need to choose our forest functional level and our domain functional level. Now, if you're creating a brand new domain, I recommend doing the highest option available. There's no reason not to. Now, there are, in some cases, reasons that you may need to go to, say, Server 2008 or 2008 R2 if there's certain software that doesn't support it. However, you always want to try to keep your functional level, both domain and forest, as high as possible. So we're going to leave this set to the default of 2012R2, since that's the highest we can do. And you can see already that the domain controller capabilities, we already have DNS because we installed that. And Global Catalog is the default for your first domain controller. Now, we're going to come in here and we're going to give this our another top secret password. And once we've done that, we'll go ahead and click Next. Now this is going to talk about creating DNS delegation. You can see it's all grayed out because the server is not authorized parent zone, but it's going to create its own, so we don't need to worry about this at the moment. So we'll just click Next. It's going to give us some more options to fill out. And you can see already that it has created the NetBIOS domain name for me. I didn't have to actually type that in. So sysadmin guru. Perfect. We'll click Next. And these path options that will show up here in just a second, there you go, are actually where Active Directory is going to be storing its database. So where the global catalog server is going to be storing its database and its logs. I typically leave these as a default, especially in a test or demo Active Directory environment. However, you may want to put these on a separate drive for different reasons. If for some reason one of the drives fills up, you don't want necessarily it to crash the operating system. But for us, we're going to leave this the way it is. Click Next. We're going to review all the options that we set here. So domain name is sysadmin guru local. The net bios is sysadmin guru. The functional level, forest and domain are both server 2012. It's a global catalog. It's DNS. We're not creating a new DNS delegation. The log folders and everything else. So with all that looking good, we're going to just click Next. It's going to go through the prerequisites for validating and make sure that it can actually create this as a domain controller. And everything looks like it's happy. Now we have a couple of um, warnings here. See the green check mark tells us everything's good and we can begin the installation, but we do have some warnings that we need to check out. So the first one is this allow cryptography algorithms compatible with NT4.0. So this is just letting us aware that we could be using an older, weaker cryptography algorithm for encryption. 
Not a huge deal again for our test environment, but something to be aware of. And then this also talks about not creating the DNS delegation zone, but that's okay. We're fine there. So everything else is passed. So we'll just come on down here and click install. And this is going to go through and actually promote our domain controller to, well, it's going to promote our server to a domain controller and actually create our brand new Active Directory domain. So we're going to go ahead and just let this run and we'll be back once it's finished. Now, if you were truly following along with that, you see that the install happened, the everything took place, and then the server actually rebooted itself and took a little while to come up because it actually had to run through all of its checks. So it is back up now, and we are on a domain. So if we go in here to our guests and the control alt delete, what you should notice now is that we now are seeing sysadmin guru slash administrator. So that is telling us that we are now part of the sysadmin guru domain, where previously in the video it just said administrator up there. So I'll put in our sysadmin guru secret password that we created earlier. And you can see we'll log right in without any problems. So our server here is now a Windows Server 2012 R2 Active Directory Domain Controller in a Windows Server 2012 Active Directory Domain and Forest. And you'll see once Server Manager loads here that all of our items will come up down the left side, so our Active Directory services, our DNS, and all of that will show up on the left. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and minimize this and show you a couple other quick things that would have popped up. So now I'm going to go ahead and click the start menu here. And what you don't see right away is anything new. But if we come up here to administrative tools, we should see a lot more stuff. So what we're going to see is pretty much anything that right here that starts with Active Directory. So Active Directory Administration Center, Domains and Trusts, Modules for PowerShell. Uh, I don't want to move that. I want to make it bigger. There we go. Sites and services, users and computers, ADSI edit. What else do we have down here? That really we should. There it is, DNS. So now that all of this has been installed, we have all of this great stuff to work with. The What you'll be doing mostly in your lab environment or testing is going to be this Active Directory users and computers, especially if you're only going to have one domain controller. And this is the place where we're going to create all of our users and computers. So if we want to join a new computer to the domain, we come in here, we can go into computers, we really can put it anywhere we want. We'll just right click, do new, computer, and let's say we're doing an exchange server. So I would do say exchange, say an exchange 2016 server, exchange 2016-1. That's the name that I'm going to give the computer. And I click OK, and now we've given the computer an object within Active Directory. And we can do the same thing with users. So we can come down here to users, and you can see that we already have a bunch of built-in security groups. We have the administrator user account, and the guest user account is automatically disabled. But let's say we want to add myself in there. So we'll do new, and we'll choose user. So first name Mike, initial, we'll just leave these empty, and user login will be Mike. Pretty simple. Give myself a top secret password. Give you a hint, it's the same as all of our other top secret passwords. And I'm just setting that for now. And then finish, and now I have actually created myself as a brand new user. Now, again, if you're going to be doing this in a lab environment, one of the things you might want to do once you create yourself as a user is double click on it and come into the user properties. And go over here to the member of tab and make sure you add yourself to domain admins. So you type in, just click the check name, then do a comma, schema admin and again check sorry semicolon schema admin enterprise admin and then just add administrators and if you give yourself permissions to all four of those groups or you add yourself to all four of those groups then you have access to everything in this active directory environment so once i've done that i'll just click ok 
And I'm going to go ahead and just close out everything. So with that, you now can install Windows Server 2012 R2 in your own lab environment, as well as prepare that server for Active Directory. And now that this is created, we can play with any of the Microsoft software that we want. We can play with Exchange, we can play with SharePoint, Skype for Business, pretty much anything. But this is the foundation of what we need for our lab. So with that, I hope this was informative, and I'll see you later.